My name is Dr. Catherine Gahu. I'm a researcher. And in this business of SBO research, we do research and training for clients. Particularly, we focus on helping clients understand their own customers, how business is going, to find their customers, how they are changing, and all that, and how to serve them better. This pandemic period has been a challenge for everyone. In our business particularly, the main challenge was that the kind of work we do, some of it requires us to engage with retail, industry, you know, see how people are shopping and the like. And the minute the disruption came, it means you cannot go to a shop, you can't go to the outlets, the supermarkets, you can't go to the various types of outlets where people shop and see how they are behaving, be able to engage with them and that kind of thing. So most of our work related to retail was cancelled. However, other work came along of helping businesses understand how clients are behaving during this COVID period. So we got work for finding out how clients are behaving during COVID. And also, one of the things we had to do is to change ourselves to be able to be fit for purpose at this time. So we had to move to online research, we had to move to telephonic research and uh, methods that help us interact with people without too much uh, interaction or face to face. But as you can see, this SBO Research Gardens, this is where we were able to show our clients where we'll be having our focus groups and interviews while keeping great social distance. Really, how I see it is that uh, when COVID first came, we all thought that, that it will pass quickly. Then after a month, we realized it's more serious than that. We went to working from home, and then after things got better, we came back. But I'll tell you, like uh, for us, we are still 50% working from home and 50% in the office. The challenge is that a prolonged period of closing businesses, closing the economy, will have a very serious impact on the economy of this country, on the business performance for various businesses, on ability to create employment. How do you keep people employed if the business is not happening effectively? So the challenge of having a second wave is to imagine that the government can even imagine to close the economy again. I don't think Kenya can survive that. I don't know what he's going to say, but if I was to say something to him, if I had a chance to whisper to his ears, I would tell him, Mr. President, please do not drop down because the disease is already spread. Even if you lock down, the people are going to still be interacting in the lockdown. So how will that stop the spread? Number two, we have to balance the interests now because the idea is to educate people to wear a mask, to follow social distance, to sanitize and do the things they need to do in their businesses, but not to lock down. And then they can also propose greater enforcement. Follow the people who are not agreeing to comply with the rules, but don't close for everybody. Let's maintain an environment where business can continue to thrive. And in my view, I don't think whether you lock down, it will change anything. Because if the disease is in the community, the health people are telling us that even if you lock down, we are all going to be locked down together when the disease is within that group. So before it worked because we were separated. Now it's gone to the counties, it's gone to the rural areas. Really, I don't think a, a lockdown will help because you remember, the first lockdown, rock Nairobi, so that we don't interact with the other people because the disease was in Nairobi. Now if you rock down and the disease has gone to the other areas, what are you rocking? The only way for businesses to thrive in these conditions is to really wake up, keep learning, understand the changes that have taken place, be open-minded and be adaptive. Maybe if I break it down, keep learning. You must learn about how to operate in this environment. You must learn about where your customers are and you go there. You find your customers where they are, find out the challenges they are facing, how are they consuming the services you normally provide or the products that you give them, how can you reach them using modern technology, using social media, how can you continue to engage them? Because if you do not change and start continue operating in the old system, most likely you will lose your customers. Social media is useful, number one, I believe, is a major source of learning. For small businesses, they should use social media to learn. 
there are so many lessons about how to operate during COVID, about the how to manage your business more effectively, how to engage your customers effectively during this period. Number two, they should use social media to engage with clients. They need to engage with their customers, keep talking and learn how their customers are feeling as they are also providing information to their clients. Third, I think social media is a very good tool for just keeping the engagement going on. If you're not on social media now, you are not able to engage your clients because they are not necessarily out there in the open to interact with you face to face. So you can use it even to show your products, to showcase your skills and everything else. I know there is a gap in access to internet because in my previous role, I served actually in a role where we tried to really expand access to internet through the Universal Service Fund. But uh, even without the internet, in the areas where there is no internet, it means then people are operating differently because in that area, it can't be just one person. It means you don't have internet access as a wider area. So you're operating based on those circumstances. So you keep social distance. Like I was telling you, like in this office, when we have a group discussion, the way we are sitting, we social distance, we keep people around, a group of even six or ten, but they are all sitting at a corner in the compound in the open. And in the rural areas where they don't have internet, they also have a lot of space, there is a lot of fresh air, so they can be able to engage with a social distance. Yes, but let me tell you, for the rural areas, for the agriculture people, I can tell you if you're in farming, there are so many facilities you can get on your phone without internet because they use USSD, the feature phone. There are programs that send you information using SMS. So you just register. There are tools that are available for agriculture without access to social media. Number two, there is television, which is available even without internet. Number three, there is radio, which is available to you. So the media sources that are available to enable you to get information exist. But the one thing I keep emphasizing is that as a business, you must keep learning. But after learning, you must also have the energy, the mindset to switch on the light, switch on. You know, there's this story I tell about how I was so amazed about a song. You know, it's a song that is very common in Kiambu, women of Kiambu, whenever they are celebrating something, whether it's a new business that has opened, whether they are launching a product, whether they have a wedding or event, there's a song they sing. And that song says, turn on the switch. It's a Kikuyu song, it says, Utia switchi. Basically, turn on the switch. And let me tell you the power of that statement. It's even biblical. Because in the Bible, we are told that we perish for lack of knowledge. And what these women are saying, even after you've gathered the knowledge, have the courage to turn on the switch. Turn on the switch so that you begin in a new direction. Turn on the switch so that even with this COVID, you are in the light. And the argument that I make for this is, you can be in a house, there can be electricity. But if you don't turn on the switch, do you see the light? The light is there by going to TV, go to radio, go to all the forms of media available to find the knowledge you need to be able to do that which you need to do. But the second thing, you must switch on. You must take action and do something about it. Don't just keep learning and do no action. At switch note, I guess tonight people have to switch on to switch TV to watch this interview. Thank you so much for the comprehensive analysis about this COVID and the business.